Hi guys, welcome back to the back to the channel. Uh, this week I'm on a bit of a challenge. Um, silhouettes is the challenge, um, but I'll let Tom O'Neill tell you a little bit more about it. So we're all uh, tired of the uh, whole lockdown thing, and uh, I think it's getting to everybody now. So I thought we could do a nice little collaboration. Uh, Basic title of the sil uh, collaboration is Silhouettes. How you interpret that's entirely up to you. What you do with it's entirely up to you. It can be people, landscape, objects, whatever you want. Just enjoy it. Now, there's no stipulation on time. Uh, the video can be as long as you like. The uh, amount of photographs you take, however many you want. As long as it's within the theme of Silhouettes. Enjoy. Okay, so silhouettes. Um, when I first heard about this, I actually had a rough idea of what I wanted to do for the challenge. Um, and rather than go outside um, when things are a bit restricted, um, I thought I'd create a sunset scene actually from home um, using little figures, um, sort of like this, um, to create the shadows of a sun with a sunset behind them. So uh, let's see what we can do, shall we? Okay, so when I first actually started to think about what I was going to be doing, I actually thought it'd be quite easy. I've actually found it really quite challenging. You see the sort of scene that I've set, but all this doesn't really make a difference because it's all going to be in darkness anyway. You're after a silhouette of, um, of the elephants and the light is going to be coming in from behind this white sheet. Um, so that'll make everything just black. Um, the, the trouble I've had is that I've got a square light Um, but an orange filter like this um, to simulate like the sunset um, but the trouble that I had was is that this is actually a square light so when you take the photo through the sheet it just you can actually see the LEDs coming through this so I had to make a new diffuser I've come up with this so this is, creates like a, a sun effect and it also diffuses the orange light even more set the camera to the highest possible Kelvin set it can go to, which is 10,000. Um, so that's the warmest set it'll do. And I've had a couple of practice shots um, and it seems to be okay, but when I was taking the shots, the battery for the light started to fade. I've been trying all morning to try and get this right. So that's on charge. Um, I've since been out in the garden and cut some uh, bits of what look like little trees um, off the garden. There are only weeds out of the garden, um, but when you stick them to the to the back of the stand, um, when you're actually looking through the camera, they actually look like little trees in the desert. Um, I've got this down, um, thinking that I'd need something sand-based coloured, but I actually don't because obviously you're not going to see them. And I've got various different figures that I sent away for, I think about a fiver for a pack of about 12. And it just means that you can get those different silhouettes with the set sun. So, uh, Let's wait for the battery to charge up for the light and then we can start shooting again. So uh, I'll speak to you in a minute. Okay, so we're still waiting for the battery to charge up for the light on the back there. Um, so I'll just talk you through the, what the setup's going to be. Um, you can see the figures uh, that I've got up in front of these two weeds that are going to simulate trees in the photo. The light behind is going to simulate the sunset and the diffused bit of paper is going to block out a lot of the sunset to create that disc that's going to hopefully simulate the sun. Um, but all this area is going to be in darkness and uh, you just have that orange glow from behind this white cloth that I've got from part of my um, cheap little studio set that I've got. So uh, yeah, silhouettes get you get from the light being behind your subject we normally use a flash or a, um, a light of some sort to illuminate the subject that we're taking but in this case it's going to be behind giving us a nice black dark silhouette and hopefully not too much editing in Lightroom and Photoshop so uh, yeah settings for the camera I am at uh, eighth of a second f eighth of a second f11 uh, ISO 50 
um, and I'm using the 24 to 70 at about 70 mil actually. Um, I tried the 100 to 400 lens, but I was just I couldn't get close enough with the lens for the focusing distance. Focusing distance on that is about like 1.8 meters, something like that. I think the shortest distance is, and it was just too far away to get the shot that I was after. But 24 to 70 seems to work well. So uh, we're just waiting for that battery to charge up, and I can get that light simulated again, and then we can start taking some shots. Okay, so I've got the battery charged up, so I'm going to have to be quite quick in coming. So I don't want to get this, I have to wait again um, for batteries to charge up. So um, you need to get rid of as much ambient light as you possibly can. And I've done that. I've got the, I've gone through all what I've got set up. Let's see if we can take a few shots. Okay, so I'm going to start taking the shots now. Remember, I've put this on the highest possible Kelvin number I can, which is 10,000 on this camera. I've got my scene set up in front of me and basically the two elephants are coming together between the two tree props um, and the sun is setting. I'm just going to move the light behind the sheet a little bit just to one side so the sun is in dead centre. Uh, so I'm going to do it now. I'm using the live view on the back of the camera. Yeah, that's much better. Um, I'm at f11 for an eighth of a second. ISO 50. Um, and I've just focused in on the uh, on the shadow of the first. In fact, I'm going to focus in on the shadow of the second elephant because um, he's just slightly behind the first one, just to get that nice and sharp. And then I can take the shot. I think um, I think once I've taken this. I'm going to have to just speed that up a little bit, make that a bit darker. That's half a second at f11. I think once I've actually taken these few shots, I am going to have to... Uh, do a little bit of magic in, in Photoshop and Lightroom, because I've got creases on my back sheet, which I didn't really realise at the start. Um, so I'm going to have to try and get rid of that. So. I'm just going to see if I can get the sheet in a bit of a different spot and uh, take some more shots. Okay, so what I'm also doing is I'm, I'm changing the position of the elephants. I'm moving one further back and one a bit closer um, to change the perspective of the, ele the elephants to make one look a bit bigger than the other one because they're both exactly the same. And this is actually a video that I'm going to be doing um, in the near future about forced perspective. That looks really, that's looking really nice. I've managed to move the sheet to uh, to get rid of a lot of the creases. I'm actually using one of the squares that it was folded up into. Um, so I'm going to take just one more of this elephant elephant scene and then I'm going to uh, change the animals around and see if I can't make something else. I could just, I could get this giraffe just to try and make it look like it's eating off one of the trees, that'd be quite nice. Perfect. So I'm using the giraffe in this one and I'm actually uh, just going to focus just on the giraffe. I've got the other tree just to the side now um, and it looks like he's actually having a bit of a nibble off the tree which is really quite, really quite nice. Yeah, that's really nice. That's come out really well. Okay, so I've had quite a bit of fun um, playing about with the different animals um, and the scene behind me. I think the batteries are starting to go again in that in that little unit, but very handy little unit to have, and it creates 
creates a scene um, that I'm after. I wanted the, the two trees um, with the sun setting on one side and the animals sort of going between the two trees. Um, I think I'm particularly happy at the moment before we get up into up into Photoshop with the with the elephant trying to look like he's eating off that tree. So I'm hoping that I can sort of boost the colours and play about with the sunset scene and uh, and create some nice images. So uh, let's get ourselves up there and uh, see what we got. Okay, so we've got the images um, into Lightroom and there's about, I don't know, 15, about 20 of them. Um, and you'll see on this first one uh, why I had to move the sheet, because you can see this crease um, that's in the sheet. And the scene itself looks okay, but this sheet of paper soon disappears, this sandpaper. And I move the sheet so we can sort of move across to one of the ones where I did that. Um, did I move the sheet? Yeah, I move the sheet and I move the sheet, the, the actual sheet itself, and I move the sheet of, of paper as well. So straight away you can see that's going to need a bit of a crop. Um, so we we'll go with a five by seven, and we'll just pull that up. Just going to just be on the edge of that. It's not an ideal crop, but I don't want that to lose that sun either. And we will warm it up a tad. We will oh oh reduce those blacks, get that nice and dark, reduce those shadows, get nice proper silhouettes. See if we can't get that highlighted. Nice bit oh nice bit of dehaze for that sun. And you can see the silhouettes are really starting to show through really quite nicely. Um not probably quite not quite the scene um, I thought I was going to get, but on the whole, not too bad. I don't think as a first attempt. That's actually quite nice. I'm going to reduce those blacks a bit more, um, and we can go down um, and just reduce that redness a bit, and maybe even change it to. Bit more orange. That's a bit better. And uh, now we can just lift those blacks just a little bit. Not too much. That's what we're after. We're after the silhouettes. Um, trees didn't work quite as well as what I thought they were, but not too bad. Um, let's see if we can find the giraffe. Um, and I'm going to crop this one to a one to one. Um, because I think this is probably one of probably my bestest, one of my best images. I think it's just about. Is that the one? Is that the monkey? Yeah, he's just that's it. He's just eating that uh, top of that top of that tree. Sort of just sort of nibbling away at it there, and I'm just trying to find that one I just edited. This one, and I can. So you can just kind of warm this one up as well, same as we did before. Um, darken down those blacks, that makes it a bit red. Um, up the saturation, just a little bit proper. Get rid of that texture, and then that gets rid of that film from the sheet. Um, 
just reduce that red saturation just a little bit make it a bit more orange really sort of boost the orange a bit more don't need to sharpen uh, we can use a chromatic aberration and see what else we can do um, we can use this to get rid of some of them specks it's actually quite nice Oh, we want the texture. Want the texture right off. <laughs> I think, yeah. If I'd have maybe created some better sort of landscape scene, maybe, and put the figures into that rather than just onto a flat table, um, then I might have been able to uh, create a more realistic scene. Then, if you like. sun coming through we can just sort of change the crop just a little bit I can't move it into there. and you can just sort of see that sort of sun coming through like that that's actually quite nice because it looks like the sun's just out of just out of shot it'd be better actually if the sun was lower down if I'd have had it um, if I'd have had the sun sort of here or just on the side on the table that might have been quite nice i still actually got it set up i might actually uh see if i can go and recreate that and move that sun lower down yeah i think i might try that in a minute but on the whole i think these are actually um actually quite nice Yeah, actually, uh, really quite pleased with them. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to bore you with all the edits. Um, I'm going to go through, edit a few of them up, pick out the best ones, and I will put up a nice slideshow for you um, to end the video. Um, I'm just going to take the opportunity to I want to point you in the direction of a new video, a new vlogger that's just started out on YouTube. Um, and I've known this guy for quite a while, not personally, but I've followed his photography for quite a while. He's a photographer down on the Dorset coast. Um, and I would, um, I would be really chuffed if you could go and give him a watch, maybe give him a subscribe, give him some support because his photography on the south coast is sensational. Um, he's only just started vlogging, he hasn't got many subscribers and I'll put a link to his channel up in this top corner here. Um, so go and check out Duncan Graham Photography um, and I'm really hoping that maybe one day while I'm down at the Dorset coast on holiday or for, down for a few days that maybe we can probably meet up for a bit of a collaboration because he's a superb photographer so um go and check out his channel i'm going to carry on doing a bit of editing see if i can't get these looking a little bit more realistic and uh i'll see you next time bye for now